Why is it that when people talk about Philo of Alexandria, they come close, but they do not look at all the contributions, the major contributions that Philo of Alexandria gave to the Apostolic and Antinician Fathers so they could develop the doctrine of the Trinity. It's amazing. Let's look at this clip and see how close they came to speaking about Philo and what he did in history and how he influenced uh, Irenaeus or before that Justin Martyr. And so I'm amazed because this uh, development of the Trinity, historical development of the Trinity uh, video, it gets very close but yet so far because this video does not mention uh, very important things which I will mention after this clip. The Evolution of the Doctrine of the Trinity Philo Judaeus was a Hellenized Jewish philosopher who lived in Alexandria, Egypt, around the time of Christ. He is best known for blending elements of pagan religions, such as Platonism, Stoicism, and Gnostic mysticism, with his own Judaism, in a series of commentaries on the Old Testament. These commentaries later had a profound impact upon the theology of many early church fathers. Philo's most notorious attempt to merge Platonic philosophy with the Old Testament involves the concept of the Logos. The Greek and Hebrew cultures both give a prominent place to the Logos, but they had very different concepts behind this shared name. The Platonic Logos was a second god and conscious demiurge. The Old Testament Logos of Yahweh, on the other hand, was not a who, but a what. Though it was occasionally personified, it did not refer to an independent being, but rather to Yahweh's plans, commands, and active communication, which were typically delivered to his human recipients by angels, dreams, or visions. In Philo's commentary, this crucial difference between the Greek logos and the Hebrew logos becomes blurred. He depicts God's logos as everything from abstract reason to a quasi-independent second God. He also introduces the idea that the Old Testament angel of the Lord does not merely deliver the logos of God, but actually is the logos of God. In so doing, he portrays God's logos in a way that far outstrips anything said in the Old Testament or the Septuagint. The logos hypothesis itself, as it appears in Philo, is full of confusion. This is no doubt partly due to its composition from heterogeneous elements, Platonic dualism, Stoic monism, and Jewish monotheism. Yet this paradigm powerfully influenced many patristic writers who laid the foundations of post-biblical Christology, including Justin Martyr, Clement of Alexandria, and Origen. Church fathers came to regard Philo as a brother in the faith and did not hesitate to take over a great number of ideas and themes from his writings. Philo didn't just give us the Logos uh, Christology, which the, the Logos teaching, the pagan Greek Logos that was taken up by the Apostolic and Antinician Fathers of the 2nd, 3rd and 4th centuries. Philo gave us more than just the Logos, the pagan Logos, and the allegorical interpretation of certain scriptures. No, he gave us the concept of the Trinity and the first formula that was used by, not by Justin Martyr, uh, Theophilus of Antioch. What did Theophilus of Antioch get from Philo? The formula of God, Word, and Wisdom, which Theophilus later described, and Irenaeus also described the same, that uh, God was the Father, and the, the Word was Jesus, or the Son, and Wisdom was the Holy Spirit. This is how they came up with the Trinity. They started with Philo's ideas of God, Word, and Wisdom. The, the Word was the Logos, and Wisdom was uh, also God at the same time, and a messenger of God. Philo used uh, Proverbs 8 to, to talk about uh, Wisdom as existing before time, before the creation of the world. So he puts them together. Sometimes he puts the, the Word, uh, the Logos, and Wisdom apart, and then sometimes he puts them together. But the Apostolic Fathers put it, they separated them into three, the Father, the Word, and Wisdom, and then they described it as, as the Father, 
the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is how Philo contributed to the making and developing of the Trinity. Way stronger than just speaking about uh, Justin Martyr and any other person. The connection here is very profound. And we can see even before Theophilus of Antioch, other apostolic fathers who were grabbing ideas from uh, Philo. For example, that God was three persons. Ignatius of Antioch is, uh, quotes that in one of his writings. Because Philo not only taught on the pagan Greek Logos as being a second God, but he also taught on the formula that God was three. He had a mystical experience where he saw that uh, in that mystical experience he heard a voice that told him that God was never alone. With God was always two supreme and primary powers. He later calls those powers different names, but he settles with God, Word, and Wisdom. And when he talks about Genesis chapter 18, where God appeared unto Abraham with two angels, he describes that as God coming in a triune formula. God coming as a trinity. And he calls the middle person the I am. And the other two are just uh, different uh, aspects or servants of God. So he starts calling that a trinity. And he calls them persons. And so in the first writings of the Apostolic Fathers, Ignatius of Antioch says about baptism that it is not about uh, one person or one God. It's about three persons. So there you have it. And then later on, Tertullian talks about persons also. And so it is wrong to say Tertullian was the first to come up with persons because uh, Philo had talked about that in his writings before. So there you have it. So many people are so close to the historical development of the Trinity, but they overlook the contributions that Philo of Alexandria made unto the Apostolic and Antonician Fathers. Oh, this is solid evidence, historical evidence, that Philo was the one who gave the Apostolic and Antonician Fathers, who were Catholic, they gave them the concept and the, the Bible verses to teach on the Trinity. First century, Philo of Alexandria wrote on the pagan Greek Logos, which he called the second God, and his mystical trinity, which included wisdom, God, word, and wisdom. Philo influenced all the patristic fathers, second century, Ignatius, Justin Martyr, Tatian, Theophilus of Antioch, Athanagoras, and Irenaeus, to name a few. Philo's influence on the 3rd century fathers. 3rd century, Tertullian, Hippolytus, Clement of Alexandria, and Origen. Philo's influence on the 4th century fathers. 4th century, Gregory of Nyssa, Ambrose, Eusebius, Athanasius, and the Nicene Council of 325. 